real people with real stories. Today we have Natalia here from Russia. Hello Natalia. Hello. Very nice to see you again. Um, so I actually asked you to uh, bring something with you. Uh, food from from Russia. From yeah. Russia. From Germany actually. From but Germany, <laughs> but it's typical For Russian Russia. food. Yeah. So what is it? And can we try this? Of course. <laughs> so what I did today morning, it's the salad. It's called vinaigrette. What's it called? Vinaigrette. 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 Yeah. It's a typical Russian dish and the advantage of the salad is that it's without meat because I don't ah. eat meat and that's why I love cooking the salad. Perfect. And there are a lot of ingredients in it. There is beetroot, um, potatoes, carrots, uh, some salted cucumbers, peas. Can I try it? Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> some spices mm -hmm. and olive oil. So this is how it looks like. I love beetroot. But a lot of people and don't open. like this, I guess. Really? Mmm. 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 <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> you can take it. Mm. I made a lot today. <laughs> I don't want to steal this from you. And the second dish is... But this is really good. The second dish is pryaniki. Pryaniki. It's like small cakes. Mm. I don't know how to describe them. Small cakes. Okay. They're sweet. And they have different, not feelings, but different uh, tastes normally. So okay. this is with poppies. Poppies. Okay. Mon. Mon. It can also be with caramel, with different berries, I don't know, different gems. Yeah. So basically living here as a Russian food-wise is not really bad because you do have options to there are options. I don't know if it's in every city in Germany, but in Bonn, for example, there are two big Russian shops and they sell everything. Uh, some things they export from Russia and some things are produced here, but according to Russian recipes. And here, for example, I think it's produced in Germany because on the, um, this, um, the, the pa package, package yeah. Yeah, some things are written in German. So the German food, though, you would still say is very different from Russian food? Well, um, to tell the truth, I don't know what exactly German food means because normally, as people understand it, Sauerkraut. sausages, yeah, sausages, sausages and cabbage. <laughs> but I don't eat neither cabbage yeah. nor sausages. Yeah. But actually, I can say definitely I love Russian food more. So where in Russia exactly do you come from? <laughs> I, I, am, I come from the central part of Russia. It's Volga region. So Volga, Volga yeah. is our river. And it's approximately 1,000 kilometers to the east from Moscow, wow. a little bit south, like southeast. And the city is called Ulyanovsk. Ulyanovsk? Ulyanovsk. Ulyanovsk. Yeah. Nearby there is Kazan. Some people know Kazan. Mm -hmm. Kazan is a big one. Mm -hmm. Our city in Russia, it's not considered to be really a very big one, but for Germany, it's definitely <laughs> it's bigger than Bonn. What made you uh, come to Germany for two years? Because that's quite a long time. Um, well, after visiting Germany as an um, intern, after doing my internship, I understood that I want to discover this country more. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to um, practice a little bit in my German because my German was not very good at that moment. So I could understand a lot, but not speaking mm -hmm. fluently. And then I had a choice. I, I, I definitely decided to go somewhere abroad to study for a year or for two years, mm -hmm. because I just wanted to like broaden my hor horizons a little bit, mm -hmm. um, just to, to meet new people, to change a little bit my life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it seems like you're um, speaking a lot of languages. What, what languages? I'm trying to speak a lot of languages. <laughs> I'm speaking like now I can speak Russian, mm -hmm. English, mm -hmm. German, French, Spanish. And also, I studied Finnish some years ago, but now, That's after crazy. all those other languages, I really I forgot. I, but yeah. I, I understand if I really want to remember, I need to sit for a week with the books and then maybe I will start again, but now Finnish yeah. is... So it seems like you're very internationally prone. How, how did that come about? I don't know exactly, but I, I'm, I think I'm in constant search of myself, mm -hmm. really, because Right now, for example, um, I'm doing what I like to do, mm -hmm. 
I'm working as a journalist. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm studying, then working as well. And I'm writing about um, culture, about education in Germany. And I like that. I like talking to different people of different nationalities, meeting different people, then writing. I love writing a lot. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the moment, I'm doing exactly what I want to do, learning languages, traveling. But at the same time, I'm not sure that, for example, in a couple of months, in, in a year, um, it will be the same because all the time I want to d discover something new, to find some new corners of the world, to, to learn some new languages. And that's, on the other hand, it's, on, on the one hand it's good, but on the other hand it's, it's a little bit difficult because um, for Russia, for example, I'm already a little bit old. <laughs> Oh, don't say that. <laughs> so, like, when I'm in Russia, everyone is asking me, where is your husband, where are your children? Ah, and, okay. Yeah, okay. And, but I still feel a child, and yes. I want to go further and develop something new, like, yeah. discover something new. I don't know, and that's why I think all this um, love for traveling and learning languages comes from. Because I don't feel comfortable, for example, in the country where I don't speak language. Yeah. And that's why when I'm in France, I try to speak French only. When I'm in yeah. Spain, I'm, I try to speak Spanish only. And so uh, now, I think for the moment I will stay here, maybe for half a year definitely, um, because I have a job here now and I have some personal reasons to stay here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at the moment I think I will stay and then we'll see how yeah. it develops. But I, I, I'm very open. If tomorrow I will have an opportunity to go to Africa, yeah. I am, you would go? I would go. Yeah. It's just interesting for me. When I'm in Russia, I was in Russia last year, yeah. and I was like a little bit between two cultures. I, okay. I feel it. I, I felt it. Yeah. Really, like um, when people started asking me, um, "Are you still a student?" Because for Russia, at 26 to be to be a student, still, it's a little bit strange. Like it's because it's too old. It's or? a little okay. bit too too, uh, too 26. late. 26. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some people, of course, who are doing their studies um, in the evening, mm -hmm. like they go to the evening school, but normally they already have a job, a proper job. And in my case, it's vice versa. I have proper study mm -hmm. and like a job, which is sometimes yeah. in the weekends, yeah. in the evening. And um, for young people in the Russian society, it's okay. It's no problem. But for elderly people, sometimes, yes, it's, they find it a little bit strange. But I have an advantage. My family, for example, they never asked me if I'm going ah, okay. to get married. They never asked me uh, why I am working sometimes here, sometimes there. They just accept that as it is. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm, I, I do not feel limited to that. It's just my choice. Why would you say you don't feel rushed by you know, these traditional pictures? And mm -hmm. Maybe because, as I said, I feel a child still. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because I already, I was in different corners of the world and I could um, somehow compare different styles of life, yeah. different cultures. Yeah. And I see that, for example, there is no problem if you are 30 and you don't have a family and you still want to discover something new. Um, I saw that's, that's not such a great tragedy and mm -hmm. everyone can live with it, it's okay. Maybe, oh, maybe because I started traveling quite early mm -hmm. uh, because um, like my real independent trip was to the US when I was 18, 19, I don't remember. By yourself? Or? Yeah. Okay. With my friends, we went to work in the United States for three months and then for four months. Okay. And maybe there I just understood that I want to discover in those other countries. Yeah. If I stayed in Russia, maybe it would be different, but yeah. I just so, so you went to, to the US for seven months in total? Mm -hmm. And then, then what happened? Um, in the US, we, it, or, it's, it's like a student job. It was yeah. a student job there. We worked, at, worked as um, waitresses in yeah. the restaurant and as, um, how it's called in English? We cleaned in the hotel, the rooms yeah. in the hotel. And there I could find really a lot of nice people, nice friends, yeah. and I could uh, practice my English. Yeah. And afterwards I decided that I want to keep Travel going. And, uh, and the good thing was that we could earn some money there. That's yeah. why I went to Europe with the yeah. bus, with my friends. And we uh, were in France, Germany, Poland, um, Holland, mm -hmm. somewhere else. So we like made a huge tour, but it was wow. not very, so we were just a couple of days or sometimes even a couple of hours in each yeah. place. 
But definitely, I understood that I want more. <laughs> now so I want you got more. a glimpse of a few yes. things, and then you, it was like a teaser. Yeah. And now you wanted it all, yeah. and, and you came here to study. Was it a culture shock in, in the US, and then also in Europe later? I cannot call it culture shock. Of mm -hmm. course, a lot of things were completely different, mm -hmm. completely, um, in comparison to Russia, to my normal life, uh, starting from food. And uh, I don't know, there is no end, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was completely different, but yeah. it was not shock. We could... Yeah. Um, it was more exciting. Than it was exciting. It was exciting to understand how, what are they, for example, what they do on the weekends, how they get to work. What do they say when they meet new people? For mm -hmm. example, when everyone was telling us, hi, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> everyone, like, yeah. it, it didn't matter if we know this person or yeah. we do not. It was a little bit strange for us, but it was not a shock. It was pleasantly strange. Some, people, yeah. some things, of course, they were negatively strange, but we just got used to it. Mm -hmm. And now I got used to different things in Germany as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but your parents uh, still live in Russia. Yeah. So your whole family, you're the only one in Europe yeah. or, okay. My mm -hmm. family, my sister. Your sister also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, you already mentioned it. So when you go back, you feel like you've changed a little bit, you know, yes. maybe more towards the German part or how, how is that? How do they see that? I, I really feel when uh, when I'm here, I do not feel that I changed. Changed, but uh, when I am, for example, in Russia afterwards, when I get confronted with another culture, mm -hmm. I feel like I am somewhere in between mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And because, as I already said, uh, someone once in Russia, for example, I already do not feel that, for example, the apartment of my parents is my home. It's already not my home. And mm -hmm. here, where I live, the place where I live, it's my, it's not yet my home, mm -hmm. so like I'm somewhere in between. Ah, okay. And it's sometimes it's also difficult when I say, for example, well, I'm going home now, yeah. I'm going here. Yeah. And then people ask uh, what are you doing in summer and they say, oh, I'm flying home. Yeah. So there are like two homes, two homes. or maybe mm -hmm. there is no home, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Do you feel maybe a little lost in between or is that exactly the space where you feel comfortable in? I think now I feel comfortable. I love being somewhere in between. I love um, looking for something, to be in the search of something like to... I don't know, I, I don't think that at the moment I want to really to be like on one place for a long time and take it really, accept it as a home yeah. for a long time. I, I, I think I, at the moment I don't want it. Interesting. So what are your next steps? Where is your next home going to be? It's difficult to say. Actually, to tell the truth, I <laughs> wanted to move to Latin America somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was well, one of my dreams. I wanted to, after I submit my master thesis, after I finish my studies, I wanted to move to Latin America. That's why I started studying Spanish. Wow. And I really started <laughs> really aggressively studying. Yeah. It was like with the book, some days without pauses. Yeah. But as I said now, because of some personal reasons, at the moment I think I, mm, I'm I not going to move. I think I will stay here, but I do not think about that as staying for a long time. It's just staying for a short period of time, I think. Moving, moving, moving. <laughs> That's interesting. Because I guess a lot of people are trying to find um, a focus point, somewhere where they can stay and start a family or uh, start their career in, in a safe setting, whatever safe may be. And it seems like you're just not afraid to move from one place to another. Well, I met a lot of different people here. Some of these people were very reasonable. Mm -hmm. They really, they, for example, they found Germany for themselves. Mm -hmm. Not only Russians, I mean people from all corners mm -hmm. of the world. And they started building their life here. Yeah. And I also met a lot of people who, on the contrary, uh, they are not af afraid of changing completely their um, life. What do you miss most about home, your first home? <laughs> I miss my friends a mm -hmm. lot, but mm -hmm. now I can talk to them on Skype and mm -hmm. it's no problem. I miss Russian food a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you ever decide to move from, from Germany, 
what would you miss most about living here? Oh, Germany, organization <laughs> and transport. Structure. Yeah. And transport, because for yeah. example, where I lived, so in this place in Russia, our transport system is unfortunately not so developed as here, not as mm -hmm. developed as here. And um, I will really miss these clean streets, mm -hmm. <laughs> this, um, those, um, how they are called it, like graphics, where maps, different maps of transport, yeah. when yeah. the bus arrives like yeah. at 7.53 and yeah. when, it's, <laughs> when it's two minutes later people are already a little bit <laughs> nervous about it. That's true. In many countries, I, not, I do not say about Russia only now, yeah. I, I was in France, I was in Italy yeah. just some weeks ago, Spain, they do have of course something similar but it doesn't work normally. In Italy, for example, it's, yeah. there is the map and there is no time. So when, when you arrive at 11 in the evening to the bus stop, you don't you are not sure if the bus will come or not. You don't know whether <laughs> you're yeah. going to be able to go home. So I not. will miss that really, these regulations and organization, the total, this thing, the really German thing. I will yeah. miss that. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are your career plans? I mean, you just said that you love working as a journalist. Um, do you think that's something you want to pursue um, also wherever you go? Or are you flexible in that area as well? I'm flexible, but I really love communicating with people. And I worked as a journalist for the television in Russia. I worked as, worked as a print journalist. I tried myself in radio journalism. Now I'm writing for online uh, sources. Wow, so. And so... Um, I think I'm flexible, but what I love the most is talking to people. It's like um, communicating with people, going somewhere, seeing somewhere with your eyes. Um, so I guess my last question would be, um, what are you looking forward to when now looking at your future? Uh, what is the thing that you're most excited about? Besides, I guess, uh, <laughs> finishing up your studies and... Um, I can say what I really want to have, for example. Um, of course, I'm laughing sometimes when people are asking me about the husband and children, but of course I want to have a husband and children, but maybe a little bit later. And it was always my dream to have three children, minimum. I don't know if <laughs> it will be true someday, but it was really one of my um, wishes, like three children and a small house where yes. everyone is together. Where though? Uh, doesn't matter, <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. I just want to live somewhere near the water. Okay. River, sea, ocean, lake, I don't care, like mm -hmm. something near the water. Then I would love to study more foreign languages and I'm sure when I'm um, done with Spanish, I'm of course not done, but <laughs> yeah. when I already can speak it fluently, I want to start a Arabic, Arab. Arab. Wow, yeah. yeah, Arabic, yeah. Arabic, I have Arabic in German yeah. now. Um, then, so after studying Arabic, I also wow. don't know. What about Chinese then? <laughs> Chinese is also nice, Chinese, but yes. Chinese, people told me that I have some abilities to pronounce Arabic words, okay. but with Chinese I'm not sure it will be very easy. Yeah. Maybe someday as well, but now Arabic mm -hmm. first. And I want to work somewhere where I really like to work do somewhere what I really want to do and also like hobbies for example my dream was all the time to translate some fairy tales mm -hmm. from for example to find some French fairy tales translate them into Russian mm -hmm. or German or English or mm -hmm. not discover it in Russia yet I mean like not that not those tales that were already translated but something different interesting but it is a hobby not the profession so you already do this just I try to do that as okay. a just for me, yeah. Uh, but I think I really, after finishing studies, I will try to do that more, like to focus on it, because I really like that. Wow. But it looks like you're already going the exact way that you want to go. I mean, you are learning all the languages, you are traveling, and I'm sure your personal, private life is going towards the right direction as well. I hope. So that sounds great. Well. Thank you very much for your time and for letting us uh, into your world. It's been very interesting and I hope that I get to finish the food <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> and um, so this was it for uh, this episode of interviewing real people 
with Real Stories. We're um, looking forward to our next interview guest. Thank you for tuning in and hopefully we'll see each other next time.